based on the topic that was given to me in the profile, these are two objectives that I teased out of the, the, the topic that was given to me, the invitation, that by the end of the session, you'll be able to appreciate the importance of professional development. Okay, and also identify and explain strategies for professional development in human resource and business administration professions. So the first is that, why should you even think about professional development? Why should you think about building yourself in a particular area uh, that is of interest to you? And if you appreciate the fact that this is relevant or is important, then how do you go about doing it? How do you go about doing it? So these are the objectives. And so if you agree with me, we'll move. If you have one that you want, something that you think you want to get out of this interaction, you may tell me. So we add it. If not, note it down. When we get to the question and answer time, you pose it, and then we, we, we try and address it. There are about four of us in this room, so I'm sure, plus your brains and experiences, that makes us about 40. So there's no question that we cannot answer. We'll be able to answer if we go around and we pick ideas from other people. So as I said, this is a practitioner's forum. You definitely do have some ideas. You have some experiences because you've been working. Some of you are working. Some of you have not worked before, but you would have had some experience from someone's story or even listening to the news. So there's a lot of knowledge in here. And we're going to share and learn from one another. So are we OK? Can we move on? Great. In terms of outline of the presentation, we'll look at some key terms. When we talk about profession, what does it mean? When we use the term professional, if we say someone is a professional, what does it mean? Then we'll have a look at uh, overview of human resource and administration. When we're talking about human resource, what does it mean? Those of you doing administration, so this gives you opportunity to tell me what you understand about the course that you're doing, okay, briefly. And then we'll look at strategies of um, professional development. What are the things, as I mentioned earlier, what should you do? Which organizations should you think about affiliating yourselves with? All right. So we'll move on to the first point, definition of terms. When we say this is a profession, HR profession, um, medical profession, okay, what, what, what comes to mind? What do you understand by the term profession? When we talk about a profession, these days it's so easy to find knowledge. Eh? You go to Wikipedia. There are so many that you can find. It says a profession is an occupation founded upon specialized educational training. Damien mentioned that a, uh, a specialized uh, was a field. Okay, so it you, you found his word is in there. It's an occupation founded upon specialized educational training, the purpose of which is to supply this in was a disinterested objective counsel and service to others for a direct and definite compensation wholly apart from expectation of other business gains. So basically what this is saying is, I think the key words there is that it says what, whatever you are doing should be, or wherever you find yourself that you say, I'm a profession of this area. If you say you are a, a business professional, you are a marketing professional, an accounting professional, an HR professional, whatever profession uh, it is that you find yourself in. When we talk about profession, this is what it means, that it is a specialized, it is built upon specialized educational training, which means that whatever training you, you would need to go through some training related to that particular field, training that is specific to that field. Are we together? Yes. yes. 
And the purpose of that training is that it is to enable you give disinterested objective counsel. So, for instance, if you say this is marketing profession and you take that specialized course, when you complete that course, you should be able to give counsel or advice to somebody when it comes to matters of marketing, when it comes to matters of uh, HR, when it comes to matters of accounting. In the same way, um, was it? for a direct and definite compensation. So whatever it is that you do, it should bring you some compensation. You should be able to get some kind of reward from that service that you provide uh, there. Again, if you go to uh, Collins English Dictionary, it defines profession as a type of job that requires advanced education or training. It's advanced education or training, which means that basic education like JHS, SS, it's not enough for you to say that um, I've completed SS, so um, the profession that I belong to is, is, no, no. You will need education, advanced education in that area. Are we together? So for instance, some of you, you're doing business administration. It's advanced because it's tertiary education, right? But you come to realize that you also need to specialize in that area. And um, normally professions are regulated by bodies, okay, some agencies that will say that yes, this person has acquired a certain level of knowledge, a certain level of expertise, that you have skills in a certain area, that your competency meets a certain standard. There has to be a body, um, an institution, that will be able to certify that what you say you know, as far as a field is concerned, is relevant enough it's acceptable, it meets set standards for you to claim to belong to that profession. So you cannot, for you to say that you belong to the accounting profession, you must have gone through a certain advanced education or training. And the body that regulates accountants the body that has to do with accounting field will give you a certificate after you have taken certain examination or done some courses or provided some evidence of what you claim that you know. And then that body will tell you that we accept you as a member. You belong to this profession. Then you can go out there and say, I belong to the HR profession, I belong to the accounting profession, I belong to the medical field, I belong to marketing. Do you understand? PR, public relations and all that. So this is what it, it says. A type of work that needs special training or a particular skill. Often one that is respected because it involves high level of education. So yes, it is work, it is work, it is work, but it is not just ordinary work. It is not just working for the sake of it. It is not just working anyhow or how you want it. It is work that needs special training. Or a particular skill. So these are a few of the definitions that I picked up for us to share, to share with you, to help you understand what it means when we refer to a field as this profession. Okay. Now, if this is the definition of a of profession, who can you refer to as a professional? Who qualifies to be called a professional? Can we just walk out of this class because we are in level 200 business administration? Say, 
I am a professional. Those who are doing HR or hope to specialize in HR, at this stage, can you begin to say you are a professional? So for you to say you are a professional or for someone to refer to uh, himself or herself as a professional, you say anyone who earns their living from performing an activity that requires a certain level of education. Remember when we looked at profession, we saw education skill come in there. A certain level of education skill or training. There is typically a required standard of competency, knowledge or education that must be demonstrated. And this is very important. That must be demonstrated often in the form of an exam or credentials as well as adhering to codes of conduct and ethical standards. So you realize that there is now an introduction of codes of conduct and ethical standards. So for you to say you are a professional in X field, the knowledge, the training, yes, you need to have it. But in addition to that, you need to respect or abide by certain ways of behavior. You need to demonstrate some behavior. Behaviors that are prescribed by the body that you belong to. And so you may be knowledgeable. You may uh, have the certificate. You may um, attend all the courses that you need to, to take. But if you do not demonstrate the knowledge that you have gone to school to acquire or those courses aim for you to do, if you do not adhere to the code of conduct and the standards that are set by that professional body, you do not qualify to call yourself a professional of that field. That is why sometimes you hear that some professionals have been struck off their status. They have the certificate all right, they have gone through the course all right, but most of the times, often, it is because of that last sentence, codes of conduct have not been adhered to. The way they're supposed to behave, the individual, though they have the certificate, Though they have gone to the school, they have not behaved up to the standard that that body, that professional body, requires of them. And so they take you off their list and say, you no longer are a member of this professional body. So to be a professional in administration, business administration, first of all, you need to go through the education which you are going through now. And from here, for after the first degree, normally you will have to also look for the, uh, 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 a body or take some more courses related to that field. Now you're doing business administration in general. And so if you finish your first degree and you want to specialize in an aspect of business administration that you have, have done, some people may want to specialize in... Accounting is part of what you do, not so. Finance, HR, I imagine. Okay. What other courses are part of your marketing? Yes. The people here are talking, those here are watching. It's good to watch, but let's know that you are part of us. Okay. All right. So, marketing, finance, accounting, HR. First degree is good. First degree is good. It is that education. But if you want to be a professional, you will have to specialize in an aspect of what you have done. And that will require that that credential that we talk about, a form of exam, that ex exam is normally administered by an accredited institution known for the area that you want to specialize in. And it is that institution or that body that will give you the credentials. So if you take the accountants, for example, you have 
a chartered accountant. Okay, you have a chartered accountant. For the HRs, you have certified HR practitioners. You're there. You have the marketing people, the marketing, the Chartered Institute of Marketing. Okay, it's a professional body. So after the first degree or after the tertiary education, one has to go through some training from any of these institutions if you want to belong to that profession, if you want to be called a professional in that area. Otherwise, when you finish your first degree, you are a generalist, okay? You've done general business administration, so you can, you, yes, you can work with it, but you cannot call yourself a professional. Uh, you cannot be regarded as a professional. For you to go that additional step, you will require to take a specialist um, program. All right. Are we together on this? Yes. Right. So we move on. So we'll look at the definition of human resource management. Then we'll come and look at the business administration. When we talk about human resource management, it's not just one thing. I'm sure you've already gone through this in year one. Or is it, you're now about, are you doing it now? Those doing human resource? Not yet, good, okay. So if we talk about human resource management, it refers to series of activities, series of activities. As you see uh, on the board, so series of activities which first enables working people and the organization which uses their skills to agree about the objectives and nature of their working relationship. So organizations are seeking for people to do a particular job. They have work that they are looking for people to do. People are looking for a job. Now for the organization and the individuals to come together and be able to achieve their individual objectives, the individual gets a job, the organization gets an employee. There are a series of activities that take place. There are a series of activities that take place. And these series of activities at the end of the day is that the individual will agree that, yes, use my skills. And the organization will also agree that I will use your skills. And in return, this is what I'll give you. All those things that happen for us to get to that point, we refer to that as human resource management. It ensures that the agreement is fulfilled. So when we find, when the individual and the organization finally agree that they would have a relationship where the organization benefits from the individual skills and the individual also benefits from uh, whatever it is the organization um, agrees to offer, then at that point, that agreement has to be fulfilled. And so HR is, again, the function in the organization that ensures that this agreement is fulfilled. So in simple sense, I've just simplified it, okay? If you read, you'll find more complex definitions and you'll get to understand it in detail. But in its basic sense, this is what it is. And Armstrong 2007 tells us that it means employing people. So all the activities bringing people in, it's, it's employing them, you're recruiting them, employing people, developing their resources, utilizing maintaining and compensating their services in tune with the job and organizational requirements. Very important. It is whatever HR is doing, it must be in tune or in alignment. It must be in accordance. It must be in the interest of the job and the organizational requirements. This is what human resource management is about. We're looking at this so that you will understand when we come to look at the profession. So if you want to be an HR professional, then if this is what the job entails, what kind of knowledge do you require to be able to do this job? What should you do to become an HR professional? Bearing in mind the previous slide that says it is not just 
about acquiring the knowledge yes you need specialist training specialist knowledge which means that when you finish your first degree whether you major in HR that is good but it could be better and it will require that you do a professional course we will come to see where which are the areas that you can go the same way when we come to talk about the business administration business administration refers to the spectrum of um, subjects uh, areas that we talked about marketing and uh, all those how do we ensure that all these functions in an organization they work together to achieve the of the job objectives and then the requirements of the organization when you look at a typical role of human resource it's associated with administrative things job you bring in people you are interested in how you hire them you are, you send out adverts and they come in and you are worried about how to pay people and all that how do people follow rules and um, regulations and, and all that but that has changed it has changed it has changed and so for the human resource professional you are not just performing these typical roles because the human resource professional is a leader in the organization and this is because whether you are in marketing whether you are in finance whether you are in hr whichever area of business administration that you find yourself in your work is supposed to lead to or contribute to the achievement of the organization's vision its mission and its values its strategy so if you are a finance person you are supposed to manage the finances of the, uh, the 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 company not so in such a way that it will achieve its strategic objectives it will be successful if you are in marketing you're supposed to um ensure that the marketing strategy of the organization it's operationalized and that you contribute to the success of the organization which is the same for hr hr has to do with the human resource aspect of the organization and that means the hr is expected to do ensure that operations are are done in the manner that will contribute to the so that you ensure that the human beings in the organization which uh, uh, the most important or valuable aspect the assets that the organization has we say the human resource is the most valuable because you can have the most expensive equipment it's people who will operate them you have a strategic plan you have all the money to turn things around it's people who will use them in accordance with the plan that you have and so the human resource then is not just making sure people come but making sure that things are aligned activities are aligned operations are aligned to the strategic plan of the organization or the strategic objective of the organization that way everybody is working towards it and this does not just come to anybody you must go through some professional training to understand how you are able to do that right. especially who sponsors the organizational mission visions and values monitors and adjusts organizational activities to ensure that the success of various initiatives is achieved because the organization will take initiatives but as a professional you're supposed to ensure that this happens is done you contribute to the enterprise by managing the most important asset of the organization i talked about are the people who complete the daily tasks 
that result in productive outcomes. Their work aids in the overall success of the organization. So this is the human resource aspect. This is what it's supposed to be doing. And as I explained, for you to be able to do this and do this well, to add value to the organization, you will require professional training. You will require to understand what the profession is about. Otherwise, you will go in there and you'll be doing something in the name of the human resource profession, but it is not it. It is not it. That is why the professional role, you need to understand it, and then you need to go through the formation that will make you a good professional. Planning and development. You participate in planning and development. When the organization has a strategic plan, if you are in administration, if you are doing business administration as part of the, the entire organization is in business. And the uh, HR department, the finance and all those things, they are all part of the administration. Okay, and so as a strategic partner, the marketing person is looking at how do we use marketing to contribute to the strategic objectives? How do, what, where is it that the organization wants to go? And for the marketing team, how can we contribute to that? The finance, how can we contribute to that? HR, how can we contribute to that? That makes you a strategic partner. So whatever you're doing, whatever your actions, whatever the operations, you're doing them having the strategic direction of the organization in mind. It is guiding that. So finance will be blocking loopholes so that money wastage will be limited. The PR department will be looking for ways to enhance the image of the organization to minimize risk in terms of bad publicity, bad image. And these things, it takes a professional to be able to do it in a professional manner. Okay. Again, provide employees with career assistance. If you take the HR, for example, now when people come into an organization, you're supposed to provide them with career assistance. As they go through the job, as you go through their performance, sometimes you walk into an organization or you get a job. When you finish first degree, you land yourself in a job, um, you go through, but as you work, as they do the performance assessment, as you, you, you go through the, 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 the job that you do, you realize that you are interested in some particular aspect. And so whoever is in HR, HR should be able to guide you to identify that this person does this well. This person is good when you give them reports. This person is good in the accounts department. Some of us stumbled into our professions. Nobody actually sat down and said, when you finish first degree, you go to here, you go to this place, and you become so sweet. No. No. It took some um, assistance to guide and shape you. So HR professionals, this is one. You provide employees with career assistance. Again, for the HR professional, somebody who is knows what this is about and not just the routine throw an advert in there and wait for people to respond no it is you attract and recruit employees that promote company objectives you attract that means that you could include head hunting or you, you you create an environment in your organization the organizational culture should be such that it will sell the company. People will hear about how people have been treated, treated in the organization, and that will attract people to come. So you don't really need an advert. The advert is good, but the culture of your organization, how people feel, should be what should sell you. And that requires somebody with a professional outlook, a professional understanding, to know that it's not just enough to craft an advert, but that beyond the advert, there are things that you need to do to attract people to your organization. And that will require some professional training, a professional eye, professional ability to be able to do that. 
serve as leaders of change. When change is introduced, the HR outfit will have to lead it and galvanize people to support the change. Work with people to implement the change. If a system change happens and now everybody is supposed to do business online, we're all going to use IT to do work. No more paperwork going up and down, sending memos left and right. We want to cut down cost. If we want to cut down cost, HR has to champion that and get the other departments to join. All right. Advocate of employees. You advocate. Employees' concerns, you take up and you address them. You get management to address them. You advise on how things should be done for employees to be, to be happy to come to work, to feel that they are valued by the organization. Provide support for victims of abuse and violence. Lately, we've heard about all these things happening in the universities and elsewhere. Something for work, something for grades. Okay. So how do you provide support for victims in the workplace? People who suffer abuse. All right. And you ensure no cyber bullying. Sometimes we use the internet to bully people. How do you ensure that that does not happen? These should tell you that for the HR department or for the HR person, it's not enough to just go through general HR education. It's important that you go through the professional training so that you open your eyes to areas that the theories may not address. It would um, give you the practitioner view of the field that you want to be in. It's not enough to do business administration and have A's and B's and finance and marketing. That you finish and you come and you cannot, um, what's that, develop a marketing plan. Okay. Or a communication strategy. When you go through the professional course, they pay more attention to practice. Because the first degree is supposed to broaden your mind. The professional course helps you to, to find a niche for yourself. It, 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 it makes you, it gives you a hold, a better hold a, and grounding in the area that you, 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 you want to be in. All right. So, Becoming a professional, where are the avenues? Which organizations or which are the bodies that help or provide these professional courses that we talk about? Professional certification. For those in HR, we have the Institute of Human Resource Management Practitioners, Ghana, and they give certification. It is yet to receive the charter so that members will be called chartered members. They are here in Ghana. They are now at uh, Chado. If you Google, you find the address. Okay. And they run, they have um, four levels before you become a certified HR practitioner. Level one and two, for those who have got first degrees, another, um, if you haven't got a first degree in um, HR or administration, but you want to do it, then you do level one and level two. But if you have a first degree in business administration uh, or in HR, once you go, they look at your transcript because the courses, the fundamentals you would have done. So you go to level 300. When you finish level 300, then level 400 is non, you don't take exams. You work on a project, a project that solves a problem in your organization or an organization that you identify. And that project will be examined. And then based on how the project goes, if the project is passed, then you will be certified as an HR professional. And obviously, the HR professional 
gets paid is paid better than the non HR professional. Okay. Um, there's also the strategic human resource management. They are also a group. We have the Chartered Institute of Administrators and Consultants, Ghana. They take care of general administration. So the business administration, if you want to do a professional course, they also have it. If you Google, you'll find these bodies. Then we have the CIPD UK, Chartered Institute of Professional Development. It's also one that deals with. Then um, you have the Chartered Institute of um, Marketing. I mentioned those. Chartered Institute of Accounting. You have the is it CIMA, the ACCA. They are all there. They have levels until you finish. You want to be called a Chartered Accountant, a Professional Accountant. You have to go through that specialized training. And as I mentioned earlier, they all have codes of conduct. Once you become a professional, you get to know them and you abide by them in your work. Okay. Then you, apart from the certification, there is also continuous professional education. So short, short courses in the area that you want to. For instance, you may have um, an ACCA. But you want to specialize in some aspect of accounting. Maybe, I don't know, payroll, auditing. So you take courses, even though you are now a professional accountant, your interest is in auditing. So you take some courses in auditing. You are a professional HR. You are interested in training and development. So you will take a, 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 what's that, a certified trainer's course you take short courses so you narrow your 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 area of interest and then you take courses that are related so you deepen your knowledge and understanding that you 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 affiliate yourself to platforms and networks that are specific to that area that you want to build yourself you want to specialize in performance management so when you go through the professional course it will take you through the entire spectrum it will take you through the entire spectrum and they'll give you the professional certification which means you can handle compensation you can handle uh industrial relations you can do uh what's the human resource development you can do all the ones recruitment and selection you can you can handle them all but you may want to specialize in say rewards and compensation you may want to specialize in human resource in uh, performance management that will then require that you take courses that are, you narrow your interest and focus on that. And also practice is important. If you get the professional certification in accounting or finance and you put it in your wallet and you put it on your complimentary card and wherever you go, you move and show. Chartered accountant, chartered accountant, and you are not practicing after one year, you will know what is happening in the field. You will lose some of the skills. You will lose some of the knowledge. So continuous professional education we've talked about. And Mel, uh, was, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, he has this thousand hour rule of practicing. He says that for you to become an expert in a particular thing, you need to at least have 10,000 hours of practice. And what this comes to is 20 hours of work a week for 10 years. So if you, if, if, you, if you go and you do your professional course and you do not practice it, that's why the medical field, the doctors, if you are a, a medical practitioner, every year you require certain points. You have to practice for a certain period. So some of them, they, have, they are out of the field, but just to keep their professional status active, they, they, they do that. And every profession has those requirements. So yes, you will have the certificate. Yes, you need to go through the special training. Yes, you need to abide by the code of conduct. Yes, you need to have all the knowledge and things that you need, but you also need to practice 
and keep yourself informed of things going on in your field. And then you have to pay professional subscription. Otherwise, they will take your name off the professional role. So professional roles and their development. This is the little I have to share with you. Thank you for listening. Now let's take the questions. Footballers. Yes, they are professional. They are professional. But they don't go through all this certification. They don't go through certification. They don't go through all this education background. But you call them professional like Messi, Ronaldo. So can you identify how they got their profession and okay. education profession? Thank you. They do other professional courses alongside that thing. That, that's to help them to get to that level. It is the fans, we see a lot of things out there, okay? We, we, see, we don't see some of these things going on. All we see that is our player playing for our team. That is it. And those are some of the things that we get. And just like you did, they are, everything is being professionalized. Everything mm -hmm. Some of them are actually medical doctors and um, sports medicine. They, yeah, are doing, sports medicine. They, are, yeah, they have qualifications into sports medicine. Mm -hmm. But for, 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 they are supposed, um, there's a school out there in Liverpool mm -hmm. doing some of these things. When, when they take your skills in addition to this to help you to build into other areas. So it is something, it is being codified as they put yeah. it professional. They codify the skills. Yes, so that is my contribution. When I was growing up in the ghetto, we didn't have football schools. We, the, uh, the football was played on the field there, and then they become footballers. But I'm aware that in modern times, we have football academies. Yes. There are football academies. In Ghana, I know the I use uh, Abedi Pele. Yes, there are football academies. They now teach the theory and practice of football. So modern football, it's a field that people are specializing in. You even have medics of football, people who, uh, professional doctors who specialize in ailments and things related to footballing, the game. So they, you see that the footballers now have medics traveling with them. And those are not just any general physician. People who specialize in certain aspects that will help them. You have coaching now. It's not matter I'm coaching. You have to go to coaching school proper, proper. And, and become a coach. Do, do you get it? And those days, the footballers, yes, they did not go to school. But they learned. That's why I asked you, what do you understand by education? Are you, uh, is your understanding of education sitting in a classroom? If that is the only way that you understand education, then we have to think broadly. Education is a process where you acquire knowledge, where you are given an orientation about something where your attitude is influenced. So education is holistic. It's a process. It can include in class and out of class. Do you understand? So some of us, our parents have not been to school, but they are educated in the things that they do. Um, now they are called designers. Hey. But they used to be called seamstress, tailor, okay, adeye. They used not to come to Gempa or go to uh, Kofi and San, you know, to learn how, where is that? Uh, Joyce Ababio. They used not to go to those places, but they learned how to cut how to design, how to sew. That was some form of education gotten through practice, apprenticeship. Now, there are schools that you go to learn and even make up. First, you sit and do your own thing. You draw your own lines. Where they meet, you say hallelujah. Now, <laughs> you have to go and learn the craft of how to even rule the line. What I mean, your submission. 
you mentioned that after doing our first degree, we have to specialize in other courses. If you want to be long to a professional, to body. be a professional. Yes. Now, one thing I don't understand is I'm uh, reading business administration. I wasn't into the business field before coming here. I was an art student, then I opted for business field. Now, when I came, they said business administration, we cannot specialize now. But I know some of my friends are doing procurement, marketing, accounting, finance, and other subjects. Then when I come back to do my master's program, then I can specialize in any of these ones that I've mentioned. Why can't we just specialize in something now and take it on. What is so special about business administration? Because now we are even doing the same subjects. What I am uh, reading, CAC laws, uh, statistics, and whatever, that is what my friends in other specialized fields are doing. Okay. So what is so specialized, like, special about uh, business, business administration? administration. Why, why should I do business administration? Then at the end you also mentioned that uh, there's a Chartered Institute of Administrators. That I find a bit encouraging, but is that a master's program or is it just a course to be a professional? It's a professional, it's a professional course. Okay, so this is my concern and I want to know. Okay. Thank you for your question, Shine. Um, why you are doing business administration and not procurement? That question, I can't answer. <laughs> because I, I, it's a matter of choice. I understand your concern that if you're doing the same courses with these people, except that at, at a point they, 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 they specialize, they, they opt, they have their own class. For, it makes sense to ask, why don't, are you not allowed to begin to also choose? So maybe year one, year two, you do the general things. You do a, your course is four years. So maybe year one, year two, perhaps year three, you do the general things together. And then year four, you begin to focus in your area of interest. In some places, that's how it's done. This particular course that you're doing is not structured in that direction. It's not structured that way. All right. So once you have signed up to the course, it's assumed that you are aware of the course structure. But that's a good point that um, the school, business school, can take on board and look at. Because we review these courses based on feedback. And so the school will take the feedback and look at what, what the student wants is what you sell to them. That, that's what you sell to them. It's a service we are providing. So if feedback suggests that students will prefer that they specialize uh, towards the end, so that when you come out, even when you leave the first degree, let's say those who do the procurement, when they come out, if they want to be procurement specialists, they will have to take the... The, the professional exam. Because the first degree is not considered a professional exam. The for, first degree is considered as laying the foundation. So when you come out and you then want to be considered as a professional, you will have to go and do these courses. But what happens is depending on where you specialize, the area in which you specialize during your first degree, you are given waivers. So that's why I explained that and it's not just with the HR, even with the finance, you're given some uh, uh, the cost uh, releases, uh, exemptions, right? So for HR, if your first degree um, is in business administration, as I explained, or HR, you, you skip level one, level two, and you go to level three. You go to level three. And once you're in level three, it means it's just one year you're doing, and after the one year you do your project, and if you are successful, you, 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 you go out. So please don't think this is for, it's useless. It's not useless. If you want to go into the professional area, you'll be given some exemptions. The marketing people too, they'll give you exemptions. ACCA, they'll give you exemptions. A career suggests a prolonged period where you have built yourself in some path. You follow a certain path. However, these days we don't even have career as in a path. We have career as in portfolio of skills and expertise because now you have millennials. They don't stay in a job for 20, 10, 30 years. They do one thing for two years, 
Another one for one is so now when we talk about career, we are talking about a boundaryless career. It no more has a boundary. Those days it had a boundary. So you say this is law, this is HR, this is accounting. But now we are talking about boundaryless career where it is more about building a portfolio of knowledge and expertise. So somebody, you may finish uh, uh, well, the business administration. You, tomorrow you are doing something in procurement. You do a short cut in procurement. You get a certificate. You get a job procurement officer. You do it for two years or something like that. You hear of supply chain. You go and test it small. You get a certificate in supply chain. You get a job. But that is what is, that's the in thing now. People are, you are acquiring expertise in varied areas. That is what makes you marketable. That is what the market wants now. And not one person. Those days we used to talk about loyalty to career. Now it's career prostitution. So people are jumping from one career to the other. You know, and the employer wants to see that you have different sets of skills. So if I take one person, at least you can do basic accounting. I don't have to pay an accountant. You have basic knowledge in HR. I don't have to go and get an HR person. You know, it's about saving costs. Exactly. So the more value, the more you add to yourself, the more value you add to yourself, the more marketable you become. The more marketable you become. Yeah. Expanding on uh, the professional bodies. Yeah. Um, I was looking to hear two areas we've had the opportunity to test, uh, okay. economics and operations management. Maybe economics is pretty clear. Operations management, I'm not too sure. Are there, is there a trajectory? Supply chain, does that it, it cover operations management? Because I know the supply chain, um, purchasing and supply. Yes, purchasing and supply, they are a professional body. We have the Chartered Institute of... Uh, Purchasing and supply. I know the uh, exam is administered in the UK, is based there, but they take it here. So I think those who do operations, you fit in there. But supply, supply, yeah, the supply. Is it? The project, no. project management, they have project management professionals. Yes. I know there's even GIMPA consultancy used to partner with the professional body and they run professional certification in uh, project management. You know, me, uh, most of the times, my friends will be asking, so what course are you doing? Then I'll say business administration. And then they'll go like, um, so which area are you specializing in? And I don't know, I stand corrected, but I, I heard, I know that during our uh, fourth year, we will be going to our various classes where you, during that period, you'll be, uh, you'll be taking two training to specialize in your area. Is that not uh, enough to get you specialized during that period of time? Because okay. you said you, you, uh, you, have to acknowledge, uh, you, you have to be acknowledged as a professional. If you have to be acknowledged as a professional, you need to specialize in an area after tertiary. So that year, that you are going, we are going to our various classrooms, as they said, for you to be trained. Is that not going to be enough for you to get specialized? Okay. The first degree, the first degree, it's a degree. So if the course structure is such that final year, you break into your spe areas of specialization, the university will give you a first degree. And into brackets, they will put marketing option, finance option, HR option, option. That is not professional certification. Professional certification is different from the academic degree that is given to you. The degree is general. It, is, it broadens your mind. It introduces you to, for instance, the business administration. It will introduce you to various aspects of business administration. Then you narrow down, you see, so you, you, you focus on one aspect of it. So yours may be marketing. Um, you are doing business administration and my understanding is that from what you've said that this course 
you've been told that at the end of yes. year four, yes. you specialize in an area that you want. Okay. That doesn't make you a professional. Do you understand? To be called a professional, you need to identify with a professional body. And they have exams that they would want you to take. The professional course is more, uh, some will even require that you do an attachment with an industry. It, it is more industry based. So here we expose you to the theory of what goes on in your field. You may have some practice, but you need deeper understanding of the job through practice. So for the accountants, I know they will let you, they will ask that you should go and intern with a firm for a longer period, you see. A longer period, maybe one year or so. For the HR, you will actually have to do a project that will solve a problem, a life problem in an organization and bring it. So the professional bodies have their requirements. Yes. But what you are doing would help you when you go to do the professional course. As I explained, you'll be given some exemptions and you already have an understanding. You already have a, the theory of what it is. So all you need to do is in practice, how does it work? You see, what we teach in class is good. When you go to the field, okay, it's a different thing altogether. It's a different thing altogether. And the professional, you are dealing with practical things. So if you're, what you do here is what we would use to say you are a professional, we may create serious problems out there. You know, that's why the, the professional body kinds of, it molds you. It fine-tunes you to fit the need of industry. Okay. I want to know if you can go in for two professions. Like a two can, professions? Yeah. You see, some people can actually um, do a degree in business administration, further in their master's. Then they can also go and do law, like, attached to it. So I want to find out if with this one, you can be a law profession professional and also be a business administration professional the sky is the limit as i explained it, it knowledge is good knowledge is good and it, it's about um enhancing yourself developing yourself adding value to yourself i i have a staff yeah he's an accountant yeah he did his first degree was in finance He's a chartered accountant. He's gone to do law. He's been called to the bar. Uh, he did LLB here. He's been called to the bar. Last time I was in the office, he came with application. Uh, Madam, I want to go and do master's in development finance. So I asked, I said, what next should we expect from you? And we had a laugh. But he's widening his horizon. He's widening his horizon. So now he's a lawyer. He understands the finance field from a legal perspective. Because all these we talk about, they operate based on rules uh, and was that a uh, laws. So he's done law now. It opened his mind. He now has law in addition to finance. Did you get it? He's also a chartered accountant. So if I, if you were to be hiring somebody. You are looking for a finance person. Then somebody comes with raw finance. Then somebody comes with finance plus law. And it's also chartered. Who will you choose? Three in one or one in one? <laughs> three in one. Of course, three in one will come with more cash. Do you understand? But you ask yourself, should you take a lawyer? Because if you are taking a lawyer, you have... A lawyer. You pay the lawyer. You pay the accountant. But you have two in one. So this person, if you are not a huge firm, that will require a legal department. This person can actually assist with your legal matters because he's a lawyer and he's an accountant. You treat him well. He stays long with you. And you cut down on the legal matter. Mm -hmm. The legal cost. I want to do my LLB after my 
administration here and I had wanted to I want to ask whether it has a link with the administration. Does it have a link with it? With it can I do my LLB? Yes, if you um LLB it's again um, I had the opportunity of working at the law school when it started. And my understanding, what I got from there is that law applies to every facet of life. Law applies to every facet of life. From your house to the road to your workplace. There is, when we get to the traffic light and we stop, it is law. She understand. The reason why if somebody beats you, you have to be careful not to beat the person and the person will die because there is law. <laughs> Guiding what you do. So the business administration that you have done is a field. Business is regulated by law. Business is regulated by law. Everything you have learned, there is a legal undertone on everything that you have done. If we want to look at finance, there's a financial act. There's a law regulating how finance is done. Not so. There's a legal system that defines how you should operate as a business, even if you want to go into business. There's a legal system that defines how HR should op uh, operate. So even when you do the professional course, there is a module on legal aspects of HR. That's law. So if you do law, if you do the business admin, and you go to do law, they have a module, I think it's a whole semester's course on employment law. It will help you to understand better some of the things that you learned, that when you are employing somebody, give you a contract. They do law of contracts. It will help you to understand why in marketing, when you go out there and you are striking a deal with somebody, be careful the things you say and the promises you give. If you are representing your organization and you go and enter into some contracts, and it, you know, so the law would help you in whichever field that uh, you, you want to, to go. Do you understand? And I didn't say move from pro, um, profession to profession. I said we are now in a boundaryless career era. Those days, somebody will do one job till they retire, 40 years, 30 years. And we used to reward loyalty. Now, the competition is such that you need people who are multi-skilled. Multi-skilled to help you to, it's about human capital. What skills are they, do you have in your organization? And so for you as an individual, you have an advantage. If you don't, oh, I can do word processing and what again? I can process the word. Uh -huh. Then the interviewer is still listening. They lift up their heart, what again? Oh, that's all. Oh, is that all? Because the business requires skills more than just what you have. Do you understand? So whatever opportunity you have to enhance yourself, please use it. T take advantage of it. Holidays, you can do a course in, fr in French. These days, learning has become so easy. It has become so easy. You don't know how to type. Go on. Uh, they say there's a software. What's the name? Somebody gave it to me last time. Learn how to type. And not just type, type fast. And accurately, yes. Because nobody will hire you and teach you how to type. Trust me, no employer wanting you to work in an office as an administrator or take an administrative role will not take you and teach you A or he, B or he. You go with your set of skills. It's your set of skills that will sell you. Your knowledge that will sell you. So the multi-skilled you are, the more marketable you are. Every employee, uh, employer is cutting down on cost. Now, you have to choose between buying already made people 
or buying people to come and develop. And especially that there is no guarantee that people will stick with you for long, you are better off buying people with a set of skills that they, they, you want. So that they come, you pay them when they want to leave, they take their bag, they go. But you send somebody to school, you train them, they come, they do one year with you, somebody offers them something better, they forget about all the investment and they go. So most organizations now, they are not so keen on taking you to develop you and groom you. No, they select or they go out there and do targeted recruitment, hunting for people that have what they want. Mm -hmm. And then you go through the selection process. They test and make sure that in terms of attitude, in terms of skills, you have what they need to execute the job and they give you the job. They pay you well the day you leave, no pain, no bad blood. You go, we know we haven't lost anything. We go looking again. I want to ask for the definition of profession. Yes. Is a farmer a professional? Yes. Because my dad in a village yeah. have never attended school before. But my dad can tell you that this season it will rain or it will not rain. Okay. And truly it will rain. How long? If I may ask, how old is your dad? 75. 75. How long has he been farming? About 38. So he started farming at a point. I'm sure when he started, he could not tell you when it will rain or when it will not rain. He wouldn't tell you this crop will do well or not. He went through some formation over the years. Look, my mother used to brew pito. Okay? Yes, pito. <laughs> my mother used to brew pito. And my mother didn't go to school. But she did it all her life. Said so that there was a time, I've forgotten the year, but I was in secondary school. They were doing local drinks competition in Ghana. Asana people came and all those things. Ghana Airways was sponsoring it. And she won. She won the national thing. And those days, it, 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 I didn't understand it, but as I got into HR and going to think, then I, I asked my, how come she didn't go to school? But you know, you use millet to do pito. When you go to go buy millet, she can look at this millet and tell you that this one cannot do. That she will tell the seller that this one won't give her much. The taste will not come out. This one will not be sweet. The farming profession is an old thing, but it has changed completely. The name is just been given. One of the problems we have here is we lump everything together. Yeah. That is, we don't we don't look at the difference. The farmer, the, the, that's it. People that are culture engineers that are put here, no, nobody knows where they put them. That the culture economies, everything. That's all. And then the actual those who are practicing, have practiced, have exported uh, vegetables from this country to Europe. Yeah. I've done that business. So, yeah, then those things. But then the, over here we don't, we love everything together and we call them farms. <laughs> that, that's one of the issues of the field in general. And that's why we can't develop our field. Thank you very much.